the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. How good is that? It is Fitzy and Weber with Kate Ritchie. Welcome to the Thursday podcast. Um, my son's changed schools, right? Yeah. And it's always hard. You're finding new mates, but also I think there's got to be something in your life where you need to impress. Oh, okay. Impress people. You've of got to. Of course, a- your peers. I know where this yeah. is going. The wristwatch. And- well, no, it's not. No, it's not genital origami or anything like that. It's oh. I don't know. I think there's a, a challenge. When a challenge has been set, it's your turn to step up, and it happened with my son. Okay. And you know, you know my son, guys. He he's pretty reserved. He doesn't like to be the centre of attention. So, for him to actually put okay. his hand up and say, "I'll have a crack at this," I was really impressed. He's currently in jail for it, <laughs> but we are going to talk. We are going to talk about it a little bit more in the podcast. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Interesting article that came out overnight, Fitz. How long should you spend sitting, sleeping, standing, exercising? Scientists have revealed the breakdown of what your day should look like. And I don't know where the hours go, man, because this doesn't kind of work in my world. Um, I'd like to also ask you the question, Ryan James. As a gym junkie, what's the difference between uh, what's the difference between light physical activity? Like, is that just walking around, or you moderate to vigorous physical activity? That'd be walking. Uh, you've got to try to get your. The big thing is, right? What you've got to try to work out, and it, you can do it any way that you want. You've got to get your heart rate up. So you've got to look at your heart yep. as a muscle that you're trying to build up, right? Now you you can't do weights on your muscle, can you? No. So the only way you can you can uh, w- work on your heart rate is, or your heart is to get your heart rate up, so it works over time. Now the more that it does that, the better that your heart is. I mean, it's recommending here 150 minutes. It's weekly of physical activity. Or you can do 30 minutes on five days of every week. Sunday mornings are my day that I get my heart rate up to 180. Right. So what what are you doing to do that? That is a, I can't remember the name of it. What's the sitting down exercise bike? There's a name for it. Yeah, right. The assault bike? No, not the assault. No, the assault assault bike is unbelievable. That's killer. That gets your heart rate up in 30 seconds, Oof. like if you're going hard on that. Mm. But I'll go I'll go 35 to 40 minutes on that ex- exercise bike, and I'll get my heart rate up to about 180 for the last 20 minutes, and you are yeah, you're cook stuffed. You. That would cook you. I was on a treadmill not long ago. Um, what, th- eight, nine years ago? Or? No, it would look at, it was this year. It was in 2024. I was at the gym. Oh, no, was at the gym. No, I was the, the guy. Com- no, I was at the cardiologist doing a stress test. <laughs> right, okay, That was the gotcha. last time I was on a treadmill. It was a horrible experience, and it didn't take me long to get up to sort of 100. It was a bet. I won. Yeah. I said I'd jump on it for five seconds. It was a silly thing. <laughs> I should have thought about it more. Here's what they say we should be doing. So for six hours, you're okay to sit for six hours a day, right? This is how we break up the 24. Okay. Standing, we need five hours and ten minutes. Yeah, I could do that for you. Yeah, yeah I don't fine. mind doing that. We're sort of moving around. Then it says, moderate to vigorous physical activity, two hours and ten minutes. Is this a day or week? This is a day. day. Hey, you should okay, spend moderate. your 24-hour so that- period. Moderate would be walking. I reckon you're probably close to walking two hours a day, aren't you? Well, then Getting it's the got, kids. Then and- it's got two hours ten of light physical activity. I would assume that would be things like whatever you're doing around the house. You That'd know, be your weights moving. and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then the concerning one for anybody in breakfast radio or working shift work, it says for your sleep you need eight hours and 20 minutes. Ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah. When, when you, you know, look at it like that, it, it, it is. It's hard, isn't it? Great in, great in theory, Captain Scientist. You know, go off and tell your scientific mates and try and get your name in a journal, but when you're a dad of three kids trying to put a meal on the table, oh, well, I challenge your theory. Don't start, mate. You you oh made God. the company, you oh. made Nova, you made Nova pay $800 for a stand-up desk, yeah. which you have never used. Yeah, I use you it every You probably day. used... How many times, Tommy? Three or four times he's used it in his whole life? Yeah, and when it does rise, we all clap. We do. And it's quite... But, Tommy, what you need to realise is that would be considered vigorous activity to actually clip the handles yes. under the desk, see the desk rise, but then at the end of the day, push it back down again. So it's almost like getting out of bed is your first sit-up. Yeah. So all of these things add to the activity. It's not just the standing. I, I went to go... 
I went to go. Um, oh, yeah, I yeah, went yeah. to go extend it the other day, and mm. it was just. It just looked at me and said, "Oh, mate, I I can't remember. I don't know how to do this." <laughs> it spoke to you, did it? The, the, yeah, the desk was talking to me, going, "Fitz, I haven't done this for about three yeah. years. How do I go up? How do I do this? I, I've, I've forgotten. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. This guy does nothing." And uh, I said, "Dave, don't worry about it, mate. You, you've been a Dave, loyal servant Dave here." Dave I said, desk. Dave the desk, we love you, mate. You don't have to rise for Thanks, us anymore. Butter. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Actually quite proud of this story. Because you got you you've met my eldest son. His name is Houston. A couple of times, oh, yeah. He is so, he, well, what a lovely style Beautiful of a kid. young man. Yeah. What well, lovely. He, he's, he's done very well. He's first born, Kate, so he's sensitive, he's reserved, um, mm. not like second born. No, he's lunatics, <laughs> a wrecking ball. The loose Lenny. So, so Huey, Huey is, he's even to the point, he doesn't like the attention that, you know, he was even asked in his footy team if he wanted to be part of the leadership group. He doesn't want to be part of the leadership group because then the focus is on him. He's one of these kids, right? He started a new school and uh, I cannot believe he's done this. And he's, you know, it's taken him a while to get to find friends and it's hard for any kid oh, yeah. who moves from school to school to find new friends. And in that age group, because how old is he now? 14. 14. Yeah, it's tricky. It's a, And it's an awkward age. So he said, can I catch the bus home with a few guys that I've met at school? And I said, Gr-. you know what? That was the best for me. I used to love catching the bus home because you could muck around with your mates and yeah, yeah. and you could have a good time. So I said, yeah, for sure. So he's catching the 745. Halfway through the trip on the way home, one kid goes, oh, we've actually worked it out. No one's done it yet. But we think that if someone got off at this stop that's coming up, you could, if you sprinted fast enough, you could get to the next stop. Oh, okay. Great challenge. Huey's put his Huey's put his hand up. What is fast? Got, and, oh, and, oh, and he's really not... thrown himself in the deep end, the bus, and now he's going to win, impress, and win everyone mm, over with the, the this, racing. Well, it, this is huge, Kate, because if he doesn't make it to the next stop, no, you didn't it could be a disaster. Yeah. Now let me tell you this: Huey went to an all boys school before. Now he's at a co-ed school, so it has been a bit of a change for him as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there's so there's girls on the bus. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Um, his his mate Hugo got his phone out and said, oh, I'll, fi- I'll film this. Wait, are you, are you sure do you want to do this? I know. Had he checked out the track? Like, did he yeah, I know. You know, you looked at the field? Over. Like, did he know he, whether he'd have to jump over a fence or cross the road? He's got a pretty good idea. Now, this goes for a minute. Are you ready for this? Okay, let's hear it. Okay. This okay, is Huey's okay. Story. Huey getting off go. at the first stop. He's making that. He's making Come that. Come on. Go, Huey. 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 Go, Huey.
excited, but I don't know what to do with them. Also, it's not a paid experience, so I kind of like want to keep it low budget. Yeah. And I want to know what the fun, free things to do in Sydney are. Could, like, I'm thinking Bondi Beach, obviously. Yeah. Could you get them to cook? Or just Japanese food? I mean, if they're working hard in the kitchen, as a bit of a payback. It'd be nice, Maddie. That's a good idea. Do you know that they are the? I I went to a music festival, the Fuji Rock Festival, over in Japan, and it's an, it's so interesting. Their culture is so different to ours that they don't really. You can walk down whip to the front of the the, yeah. the headline act. They give each other space, and what they do at the end of each song, they just all clap like that. So there's no there's no mosh pit. There's no mm. nothing like that. They all give each other space, and they all just clap at the end of the song. And it's there's no lineups to the beer tent. Yeah. It's just They're, it's, it's, a, it's a, a different great culture. culture. Maddie, can I give you a quick story? Uh, a mate of mine by the name of Rob Long. He's a bit older than me, Rob. Um, this was back in 1977. They had an exchange student staying with them from the States. Anyway, the exchange student came downstairs one morning at breakfast and said, I need to leave. My uncle has died. And her, uh, his uncle was Elvis Presley. And they had no idea whatsoever. No. How, old was, how old was Robbie Long? He was one. He had older brothers at the time. <laughs> well, he still has older brothers. They've kind of get, gone in the same... Um, Ratio of age. 1977. 77. How's that? My uncle has died. I must go home. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I loved oh, Elvis. Wow. <laughs> Joseph in Hitchinbrook. Joe, what do you want to talk about? Morning, boys. What's going um, on, Joey? So I caught up caught up on the podcast last night, and you were talking about the spark yesterday. In oh, a relationship. In a relationship. Oh, relationship. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I've got my own, like, analogy that I tell all my friends when they're just starting a relationship. Mm. Yeah. Relationships like a campfire. It takes a while for it to start, but once it starts, it burns hot. And if you keep looking after it, it will last forever. Joseph, you're a genius, mate. Oh, jo- well, Get that on a T-shirt. Is that too much for a T-shirt? That jo- is... I don't know if someone's looked after a fire forever, but it's a... Um, it's a beautiful analogy, yeah. Joseph. And are you using sort of kindling at the start of that relationship, or what are you doing to start that or sp- spark the fire, Joe? Every relationship's different, you know, like kindling, yeah. maybe, you know, maybe a bit of coal. Something, if- you've got to find something that, you know. Would, al- going. would alcohol be a jiffy fire lighter? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the beer goggles, mate. Oh, Joe, right. Joe, Joe, what a beautiful so, analogy. And, well, I, you and know, you're in love, are you, Joseph? Yeah, I've been with my partner for four years. We've been engaged for two. Oh, maintaining oh. the fire. When are you getting and, married, buddy? Uh, we're probably looking at March next year. Bang. Well done. And, and what stage of the fire is your relationship <laughs> at at the moment, Joe? Where? We're, uh, we're still burning pretty hot. Oh, yeah, well done. Got some stank well on it. Because it's great, you don't yeah. want to get to that stage where you need to call in the fire brigade and go, yeah. honey, I'm about to tip a bucket of water over your head. Yeah. What does that mean? Or, it's over. I'm putting it out. <laughs> or, you, sh- you know, she, you, she realises, she, you, or you realise she's a little bit distant mm. at the moment and... <laughs> And then you see, you, you look over and you wake up halfway through the night and one of your mates is peeing on the fire. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's horrible. <laughs> that's, that's called the start of a bushfire. That's an inferno. That's when your mate's hooking up with your wife <laughs> and you don't, and he's peeing on the fire. Yeah. Again. What, mate, what are you doing? Build that uh, into no, the, uh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> build that into the metaphor. Good on you, Joseph. Hello, Brock. Hey, guys, how are you? Doing Cronulla proud this morning you are, mate. What's going on? Mate, boys, I've got the Hocker Half Marathon on Sunday morning. Oh, Four here we go. This 60 mil rain. I yes. get the old chase cream out. Yep. Did, so, Brocky, have you done one before? Yeah, I've done a couple before. I went down to Canberra and done that one a few weeks ago. Yep. Good effort, Brock. 21. So, Brock, it says here that you're a carpenter, Brock. So when, when do you get the time to run? Um, of a morning before work. Good, Good effort. effort. That is great. I've got yeah. a six-month-old son, so when I get home, I'm just all hands on deck. Yeah, Brock, you're yeah. a superstar. I would, um, I would agree with you on that. Are you going to go with sort of the um, step one undies, which will give you a lot of anti-chafe, uh, possibly some bike pants? But you're right. As many water-based lubricants as you as you can get down the front of your pants, go for it. 
Yep, I think I'm just going to be in the budgies. In the well, budgies? You know what they say about marathon Ooh. running, Brock? It's like a fire. <laughs> oh, they've never, <laughs> ever said if that. You, um, no, no, no. It never, uh, <laughs> it never ends. If you, if you start huh? it... Um, and you keep running, no. it'll burn forever. That's no. what they say, bro. Do you know what? <laughs> um, do you know what we're going to give you, bro, too? Because you've called yep. through on time. We're going to give you a pair of limited edition Fitz and Whipper budgie smugglers. Oh, oh yes. Why don't you take those Thank to the you. hopper run? And, yeah, 100%. And for our love analogy, I think we're going Joseph without a without a without a, a, doubt? a, que- a without a doubt or a question. <laughs> um, you're going to be climbing the bridge, Joseph. Congratulations, mate. Thank you so much, boys. Good on you, it's Joseph. It's the vivid Sydney climb. You can experience it and witness Sydney sparkle from the top of the iconic Harbour Bridge. Book now at bridgeclimb.com. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. What was that, Kate? You want a Rabbitohs update? Oh, yeah. oh, what do you got? Come on. I want to hear about the bunnies. What's going on? Because we heard about the coach. Well, we were consoling Kate yesterday when she was in tears in the office, <laughs> found out that Jason Demetrio was leaving the club. Mm, Demetrio, um, go. There was a few rumours going around that Wayne Bennett had... Uh, mm. May have got a phone call saying, do you want to come back to the Rabbitohs? He's confirmed that, Kate. Yeah. He's got a phone call. He has got a phone call. Imagine that. That's massive. And this is the power of Russell as well. I think Russell makes that phone call. Wayne, I know you're up at the Dolphins. you got one more year. When you finish this, at the end of this year, how do you feel about coming back to Redfern? Come home, son. Do you think he would? Yeah. Um, any word from Russell? Has he made a statement regarding the sacking of the coach? Well, no, he no. hasn't really said anything. I think, well, do you know the other one? Michael Checker, who who was the coach of the Wallabies there for a while, yeah. has Checker confirmed plate. his interest in the vacant coaching role of the mm. Rabbitohs. This is massive. Oh God. Could this be a reality TV show? The, the process of finding... Super coach. I think that's a great idea because especially if Wayne is not available mm. for another year, yeah. um, then then maybe they need an interim coach. I mean, mm. we could put our hand up. Okay, Kate Ritchie, congratulations. What You've you- just got the coaching role at the Rabbitohs. What do you think you'll do with the club first? Um, New jerseys or...? No. no we need mate, answers, I, Kate. Don't you, we, we, you know what? I, it's all about bonding, I think. We need to All get right. up. How do you expect? Bond. How do you plan on bonding? Kate? So what? The just pub? getting started. No, absolutely no drinking. None of, no that, none of that stuff. No. You, you know you got to dig, dig down and um, hmm? dig what? dig <laughs> in into the microphone. And <laughs> now you're trying to make me found, sound <laughs> silly. Found silly. Um, and then I hope I'd be I'd be actually very good at coaching a rugby team. How? How? Tommy, because they would just... listen. <laughs> About bonding. Tommy, you, your, you get your coaching career just sounds like Mal Meninga's <laughs> political career at the moment. It's lasted 30 seconds. You've been given the sack. The interim coach is out. You got, you've got you got Penrith tonight, the Rabbitohs. I don't, Do you know want the jo- I don't want the job. I couldn't handle the stress. I mean, have you? And also, it's all it's such a bad angle when they shoot you up yeah. from below up into that up box. the nostrils. Well, do you know what usually happens? <laughs> I don't, when I, what I want, it, like in the studio, I want I want a camera at my level, if not slightly above, and a, a warm glow in the sure. lighting. I, 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 how's this, right? Usually, when a coach gets sacked. The team wins their next game. What's the bet they beat the Panthers tonight? Nathan Cleary's not playing. I'm back. Oh, and I don't know mm. about that. In yeah. your tips, I'd be putting the Rabbitohs to beat the Panthers tonight. Yeah, Do the, you other, watch? the other thing too, Kate, having seen you at the Taylor Swift concert where you kind of missed a lot of the cues and yelling out, what time is it? You sort of... But NRL is in my blood. I grew up in Campbelltown going for the Magpies, did go for the North Sydney Bears before that. You're actually Bring pitching. back the Bears, if you ask me. Yeah, You're actually pitching Michael for the Gittner. role. You might go straight to CEO. Yeah, well, I'll be keeping my phone on <laughs> during the show. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. I'm still bad. We're on. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's time for 60 Second Starts. Kate Ritchie. I'm still standing. Now. I'm still bad. Visit Sydney's ultimate Kia experience dealer, Sydney City Kia, O'Reardon Street, Alexandria. Jared in Hemway. Where's Hemway, Jared? Uh, Hemway, such a peak. 
Oh, gotcha. Oh, there you hey, go. Oh, oh I've got to get that right. That was not written on the screen properly for me. But, Jared, you're in the running for the brand-new Kia Sportage SX Hybrid. You need a new car in your life, Jared? Uh, yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be bad to have one. Good on you, yeah. Jared. This yeah. is exciting. Katie had a win yesterday, which was exciting. And what about me? Yeah, and Kate had a win also. Uh. Um, so can you beat her today, Jared? 60 seconds worth of questions. Yep. Good luck, oh, Jared. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, good luck, Jared. Two hundred dollars. It's been jackpotted. Um, Jared, your sixty seconds. It starts now. now. Who is older, Jared, Eminem or Kanye? Eminem. Eminem is correct. Name one of James Packer's exes. Oh, he's got a long list, doesn't he? Uh, pass. Pass. Okay, Kate. Over to you. What's the process called when a liquid turns into a solid? It sets. You bake no, it. it's freezing. Oh, you Jared, over well, to you. No, Jared, but that is Jared also... how many kids do Beck and Leighton Hewitt have, Jared? Three. Three is correct. What is the tallest breed of dog in the world? Ooh. Pass. That's the Great Dane. Uh, Kate, over to you. Is the Thermomix a German or Aussie invention? German. German is correct. Where in Sydney is the Riverside Theatre, Kate? Parramatta. Yes. I don't want to rock DJ. A lyrics from who? Robbie Williams. Correct. What year did the last season of Australian Ninja Warrior air? Oh. 2022. Correct. Yes! Yes! She got it. Oh, yes. And also, I win twice because when you make jelly and it's liquid and you put it in the fridge, it goes to a solid and that's what you call by the jellies. That's what you it's say. Setting. The jelly is set. Yeah, but you said baking. As a second no. answer. I What's the process set called baking. when a liquid turns into a solid? Well, well, well jelly's not a solid, is it? Yes, it is. Yeah, you would oh, say it's a solid it's form. Jelly on a plate. Wibble, jelly wobble, on wibble, a plate. <laughs> jelly on a plate. Doesn't I'm so sorry, won. Jared. Jared. No, it's all right. It was my daughter that called up, actually, so she's sitting next to me. Yeah, but you lost for her. Oh, I lost for her. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Can you smell what the rock's cooking? Can you smell what the rock? Is cooking. What was the... There was a... What? A, the latest WWE. The Rock was up against and The Undertaker came out of yeah, nowhere. Yeah. Like, it's... You can't do that, man. What a huge industry that is. I don't hey, get, um, I don't... It, it just... You don't get The Rock, do you? I don't... You can't yeah, smell what The Rock's cooking, can you? I have never heard that <laughs> audio before, and it doesn't do anything to support my love you know of what? The Rock. Uh, I mean, what? I'm sure he's a good guy. Fitzy and I have interviewed The Rock a few times. He's what's, awesome. What's the greatest Broadway show that you've seen, Kate? Ooh. Broadway? Mm. Yeah, like so you... Like theatre? Th- yeah. Lame is... Oh, maybe one of those big ones, yeah. Phantom. Like a lame is. Would be yeah. cats, Well, for, for wrestling cats. fans, that's what it is to them. Yeah. Like when that they is s- the worst explanation. There used to be Kate no, Ritchie. There used to be a guy on this show called Matt DeGroote. I don't know if you heard of him. Matt DeGroote would bow down and die in front of The Rock if he could. He is obsessed with The Rock. Does he think he's The Rock? Oh, my Come God. On, I was at a I was at a cafe one time in LA and the rock walked in. And you should see the size of him in real life. He's a mountain. He's not he, a rock. He's a I, mountain. I've got a back whip up here. He is one of the best interviews we've ever done. And you know what? He, he does could do deliver, a, doesn't he? He does a whole day of promotion for a movie, Kate, and with every single interview he is on and he has your attention and he is a great interview. Do you, do you think he's a real person? Oh yeah. He's kind of more like one of those people that I look at and I think you're so hairless and shiny. No, no. Yeah. And 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 if I mean calling, I'm going to, back to baby Randy. <laughs> we were talking about it the other day. It's almost as if I could unzip him from the chin and crawl inside of him no. <laughs> and be the rock for a day. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't. Like it's think not real. He, he, that doesn't. It's almost uh, AI, isn't it? It is AI, and they haven't got the shirt fit. You can't fit right yet. You can't smell what the rock's cooking, can you? Do you know what? What about that time we did the interview in LA? Vince, and we put Pete Hellier was there, I think, for maybe the project at the time, and Pete was going in before us. And Pete had his notes; he'd written them in a diary, and we took his diary and put a put a playing card with a naked man on it. That was Jabber. Oh, was, was it Jabber? Jabber? It was Jabber. Yeah, do you so Jabba got Jabba. in there to interview The Rock and he opened his notes and a playing card with a man with his genitals like... 
Is that wrong for... to say, Tom? Is that in 2024? Oh, well, I mean, is... you've said it now. Is that so... all right in 2024? <laughs> you're, you're gone, mate. You don't want to that smell what it. The Rock's cooking that day. You've said far worse. Okay, yeah, true. he has. <laughs> yeah, they're there. all in, written here in my exercise. <laughs> 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 well, let's Laugh put a, it up, let's mate. Let's put a playing card in there. <laughs> <laughs> Tear that up, Tom. Um, the Rock's been filming a new movie. It's called Red One. Uh, yes. And there's been a complaint about how The Rock has handled himself on set. A couple of things they're saying is cost the movie... Over fifty million dollars US, so that's seventy-seven mil. Because The Rock not only is continuously one hour late to set, Kate Ritchie, and what do we know on sets, mate? Time is money. Well, on Home and Away, it's like that too, isn't it? Absolutely. Imagine if someone is. turned up late and you're in your bikini about to do a scene on the beach, at Summer Bay. I never wore a bikini. Okay, you're at the school. In my uniform. Oh, yeah. being the principal. Yeah, the yeah principal. I get it. I get it. Yeah, you have to be on time. You've got to be on time. And what the, What on earth is he late for? Yeah, what is he doing? Push-ups he, in the trailer. Great question. He's box office, though. He's the one bringing in the money. Not the point. So you make it back when you put it into cinemas. This is the thing. Everyone wants to see The Rock. He also turns up with his PA everywhere he goes. The Rock refuses to use... A public bathroom, claims the insider. So the rock... Well, there's a lot of people like that. The rock, on set, will find a corner in the room and he pees into a Voss water bottle. Oh, uh, the, what a load of his crap. Team or PA is handed a Voss water oh, bottle, a, a Michael Voss water bottle, oh, yeah. and he then has to empty... She has to empty the warm container of the rock's urine. I can't. Dick. Can you do? Can you smell what the rock's cooking? Can you smell <laughs> what the rock is cooking? Is it urine? Is it warm urine on a film set? I don't... Um, Did you do that on Home and Away ever? Yeah. Into a water bottle? Yeah, but Ray put mine down the drain. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the community of Summer Bay. Yeah. Hey, we're Irene, real, we're, re- this. we're really tight. Irene would pull up in her charger. Yeah, in the charger. You're bloody hot. You're and bloody like, dehydrated here, yeah, Kate. It's well, quite yellow. <laughs> Lyman Mungrel. Hand this to Tug and get him to put it down the drain. Give me your wee. Flame Here's a litre and a half of water. Uh, God. It's got to be clear. Flame and galah. You wouldn't get this in Yabby Creek. Well, you would. Well, it's worse. It. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard about the people that live oh, in Yabby Creek? You should see what's in the lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> All right, after this. I want to talk more about The Rock, but we're going to need to do that in the song. Yep. Why? What else do you, what else do you want to say about The Rock? I just don't know why he's late and why... And you know what? And also, do you know what I also just want to quickly ask, yeah. say? Is that maybe it's not diva behaviour not wanting to wee in a public toilet. Maybe he's absolutely petrified that everyone is... Um, what, for want of a better word, like gagging to to look at it to 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 get that naughty photo or or oh, put a camera sure. in there and catch him at some kind well, this, of yeah, you know inappropriate. Well, moments. some people are. Well, some people have fears, phobias mm. of public toilets. Other people love them, like Alan. The Fitzy and Ripper with Kate Ritchie podcast. We like the life improver. How good's the life improver? Oh yeah, the life improver. Your life. Improve it! Bankwest's in-app alerts keep track of your balance and notify you when you get paid. That's genuinely useful. Consider if right for you. App terms of use apply. That's exactly right, guys. And thanks to our mates at Bankwest, we have $1,000. We want your digital life hacks this morning. How are you using tech to get through life a little bit easier? Well, it could be a mobile phone life hack, a cheap you know, website trick is always good. I love a little loophole in a in a website, Kate. Yeah, or it sure. could be a it could be a hack on an app. You know what I mean? Fiona's Cap-cap. giving us a call from Marylands. Give us a life improver, Fee. Good morning, guys. Um, so this will blow your mind when you travel. Yeah. Um, you know, like you never know what time your flight's going to arrive. Is it delayed? Are you picking up mum from the airport? Are you going to mm. spend fortune on the car park? So whenever the person who's flying, you just text like your loved ones your flight number. It just has to be your flight number. So let's say it's like Qantas QF, I don't know, 12 or whatever. Yep. Yep. You send it to them. And then when they receive that message, they just hold on it, tap and hold. And then all the flight details will come up where it is currently, how long to land. What? When to land. No. Does it? 
just simply from the flight number? Just from the flight number. And then um, on the new iPhones, I believe you can get a map. Like, so it will actually show wow. you okay. where it is on the globe. Where well done. Oh, that, well done. Is, that is massive. Fiona, you're in the lead. That's awesome. Well, she's the that's, first well, one. That, that's right. <laughs> Technology. James in Leppington. Life hack. What do you got for us, Jim? Yeah, morning, guys. If you have a, a pretty full inbox that you don't have time to just go through, mm. you can actually filter your inbox to search for the word unsubscribe. And a lot of spam emails have that at the oh, bottom, and it course. selects them all in one go, and you delete it in one press. Oh, I love that. I love that. I also want one that just unsubscribes from the ones you want to unsubscribe from. Yeah, 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 I think I understand what you mean. Mm. Jim, that is a belter. Lana in Campbelltown, tough to beat, but have you got a digital life hack for us? Good morning. I sure do. What is it, Lana? I hope your boss isn't listening right now, guys. He doesn't listen. Don't worry. (laughs) Never has. (laughs) That's it. So if you're on Teams, and you know how sometimes your boss might check if you're online? Yeah. So you can just call yourself and leave the call running, and it'll always show you're online. Genius. And then you can go, you know, have something to eat, put your washing on, Netflix and chill, whatever you like. (laughs) Netflix and chill. (laughs) You don't want your camera on for that one, Lynn. It's teams. Lana. I'll explain it later. <laughs> it was a it's COVID thing. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't yeah, you haven't worked a part of one for years, Kate. <laughs> Holly in Paddington. Oh. Holly in Paddington. Digital life hack. What do you got for us? Hey guys, how are you? Good hi. Um this is a pretty Gen Z one, but if you take a photo of your pantry, you can upload it to AI and then it'll make a list of everything that's in your pantry. And you can ask it to make a recipe. No, Prioritising the things you already have. No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. I hate all of That's this That's like stuff. Aristos, the surprise chef. He would turn up and have a look. Who's <laughs> no, Aristos? It's, it's got nothing to do with no, Aristos. No, it is because he would turn up and he would look in your pantry and go, all right, tonight I'll do a beef bogginion. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah isn't but that fun? isn't that what you do? Isn't no, the, the fun of no, like walking into your pantry and going, ooh. Yeah, huh? and, and Aristos, it was <laughs> all cold. set up. Aristos How would go, dare oh, you. oh my gosh, you only have a kilogram of minced meat and some garlic. I think I'll do Whoa, minced garlic. Let's make a spaghetti bowl. <laughs> Shots. Do not question Aristos, mate. He could knock on anyone's door and produce the finest dining ever. Who he, is Aristos? Aristos. You know oh, he Aristos? was. Yeah. He was, a, he was oh, a myth, mate. Oh, Aristos. Yes, he was all. Yeah. What's his last name? Uh, Palapatapalas. Palapa, uh, papala, t- I can't read it from there, Tom. Who, now, we need to pick a winner here. $1,000 up for grabs. Oh, my Kate, God. you've got to make this decision because there was some belters this morning. Yeah, I'm going with James from Leppington. Oh, Jim! James, you got it. <laughs> Unsubscribing is a big deal in my life. Unsubscribe. Kate does it with her real friends in real life. <laughs> Fits in Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.